Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all still awake. I can't see any of you out there under these lights. Um, as David just introduced me, I guess my background actually comes from a variety, both as a, uh, a technologist, an advisor, as an investor, but also an ecosystem builder. And I guess that's particularly what I've really been asked to focus on today. But first, let's just explore. It's like, why do I love working with startups? And it's not just in blockchain. It's actually in a variety of different areas. So I work in artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, crypto, blockchain, all sorts of things. Fundamentally, at the end of the day, why I love working with startups is because it's exciting. And there's actually super cool people uh, that actually want to change the world, and they fundamentally believe they can. And we'll actually touch a little bit like that on that later in this, uh, in this short presentation. There's a, there's a couple of reasons also why I like working with startups, and particularly in the digital space. And one of them, if you actually look at this graph in terms of market capitalization and the changes basically over the last five years, you just look at basically what was, who was there in 2013. And you see the likes of sort of Berkshire Hathaway, Exxon, uh, Walmart, et cetera. It's a bit like what David spoke about before with Sears. You have some enormous com companies there that are basically really focusing on bricks and mortar, physical space. Now you actually have a look at it in 2018. Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, Tencent. Every one of them is a digital company. And if you actually t take any one of your smartphones and you look at the front screen and you think about the apps that you typically have on that front uh, screen, the core valuation, the market capitalization of those apps sitting on that smartphone are typically more than the entire Australian stock exchange just sitting on the front cover of your phone. So it's quite amazing. So there's one thing we often get asked and work with when uh, actually talking to startups and they say, okay, I've got this amazing idea. We're actually going to take this to the world. We're going to be the next app or we're going to be the next whatever. And we turn around and say, look, fundamentally, and someone mentioned this earlier before, don't fall in love with the solution fall in love with the problem. And so we always say to people, solve big problems and actually create solutions for real human needs. So when I saw the, the title of this forum today about being uh, blockchain and sustainable development goals, I thought that's actually fabulous because it really is about saying, how do we actually satisfy these needs on a global scale? How do we use emerging technology, frontier technology, whether it's blockchain, artificial intelligence, robotics, etc to actually do something meaningful and something real. And I think that's actually part of what excites me about the ecosystem here in, uh, in Vietnam. So particularly even here in Ho Chi Minh City, yesterday we were um, delighted to be invited to be part of the Ho Chi Minh City Economic Forum. And we're actually talking about so that how do we actually build smart cities? Ho Chi Minh City is a, a smart city. How do we build smart agriculture? How do we build smart government? These things are massive. And when you actually look at the agendas that they're actually talking about for Ho Chi Minh City, is how do we actually uh, deal with clean water? How do we actually deal with waste? How do we deal with mobility and transport? How do we get affordable housing? These are incredibly worthwhile goals. These are actually also aligned with the SDGs. One of the ones that's actually particularly interesting, I think, is the, the role of smart e-government. When you think about government, this is a particular challenge also for, uh, for Vietnam. 90% of all government processes were created pre-tech. And as one of the earlier speakers said, don't just try and actually digitize existing processes, fundamentally rethink it. So the UAE and countries like Estonia or Estonia are actually using, uh, gone fully online. So be between digital governance, artificial intelligence and blockchain, you really do have the opportunity to disrupt pretty much every government process. And I think that's fundamentally exciting. And the challenge is, you think about where this came from, where the whole idea of blockchain, particularly cryptocurrencies and everything emerged in the early days, it was actually a distrust of government. It was a distrust of big institutions. It was a distrust of the finance sector. And so in fact, we've actually now got the opportunity to do something really positive. However, this all comes with a warning. And the warning is that creating a startup ecosystem is easy to say. Say we actually want to build a blockchain uh, hub and community in Vietnam. Super easy to say, just rolls off the tongue incredibly difficult to do. And one of the things I've been pitched a lot of businesses since arriving in, uh, in Vietnam, and 90% of them are all blockchain focused. 90% of that 90% should never even be using blockchain in the first place. We're actually using it for the wrong reasons. And a lot of people are actually saying we're using blockchain when in actual fact they're not. So there's a real quality issue here and we'll come to that. But part of the reason why I actually say, saying it's easy to build a startup ecosystem but it's actually much harder to actually do it in reality is because this fundamental notion that says culture beats strategy. Culture beats strategy. 
David spoke in his uh, one about the number one reason for failure was about uh, transformation was about not actually educating or transforming your staff. Most of the time, we just assume that we can actually roll out a new system, a new product, a new process, and we're just going to get mass user adoption. Doesn't happen. Every country, in Vietnam in particular, has hundreds or thousands of years of legacy history and culture and ways and rituals of doing things. If we don't address that, we don't actually work within those parameters, then we're actually going to fail. We can't just bring the lessons from Silicon Valley in America and other parts of the world and just apply them straight here. We actually see a lot around the world where we actually talk about what we call innovation theater. There's lots of noise, lots of lights, lots of bright shows and everything else. Lots of people talking about doing stuff, but who's actually doing it on the ground? And that's where we actually really start saying, how do we build this ecosystem? And there are multiple actors in here. There are multiple people. So it's not just the people in this room, and I don't know. There may be people from government here. There may be big enterprise. There may be academics, researchers, and inventors. Everyone has to play their role. Everyone has to connect. So Yellow Bricks before, or Blocks was talking before about connection and actually joining the dots. But there's a fundamental piece that we do know that with any of these ecosystems, the ones that actually work, the ones that actually go on to become successful, are the ones that are actually built by entrepreneurs, run by entrepreneurs, and actually for entrepreneurs. It's not a government-led initiative. It's not actually a big corporate-led initiative. It's actually the entrepreneurs, the one who dream and believe that they can actually do something for the nation, that actually step up and do it. Everyone else needs to actually step up and say, how do we support you? How do we actually create the right regulatory environment? So what is the role of government? How do we engage with government to actually become an enabler of such an ecosystem as for the blockchain? How do we actually get them to become a facilitator and even a customer? And this is actually one of the biggest challenges. And the presentation we just saw about um, the health system, the insurance system, and everything else is a massive opportunity to basically say, how do we actually both as government, but also big company, actually be customers? So the best thing that actually a, a new startup can actually get is its first customer. Everyone in Vietnam is focused on investment. Many other countries around the world, actually, and including Australia, we tell people do not focus on investment until you've actually got a customer, you've got an MVP, a minimum viable product, you've got a proof of concept, prove you've got some traction. If you can get both, which means you get a customer on board with early um, uh, purchases, that actually becomes a form of investment. But even more impressive, on your company profile, you say, I have customers. This is different than someone, I have someone who actually says they believe in the future of this product, it actually says someone's actually going to pay me for this product. It's a significant difference. How do we do that? It's about actually creating an inclusive environment. How do we actually create an authentic culture where all these players, the government, uh, policy makers, big corporates, every one of you in here can actually turn up and have the genuine conversations. It is very much about the genuine conversations. It's very much about diversity and connection. And this is a theme we've been hearing continuously all the way through. But one of the key challenges and particularly with things such as blockchain and cryptocurrency, is embracing the outliers. And there's a question, are these the heroes or the villains? And said the people that actually created the blockchain and created the crypto were initially uh, considered to be the villains. They were the ones that were going against the, uh, the government. They were the ones going against the big corporates. But in actual fact, a lot of them are actually now becoming the heroes because we're actually starting to see, okay, we can actually use this. Because what these people do is they point out where the system's broken. They point out where things can be fixed. And the, the George Bernard Shaw quote basically says, the reasonable person adapts themselves to the world. The unreasonable person adapts the world to them. Therefore, all progress depends upon the unreasonable person. So let's be prepared to challenge. Be prepared to challenge the system. Be prepared to actually look into what's broken, but at a fundamentally global level, how do we start attacking those particular issues? And if we look for inspiration, and again, uh, other people have already quoted this particular individual before today. And they sort of the one about the crazies. And this is about basically the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. And you think about it, that's a lot of what you people are here for today. Some of you just want to become that big capitalization table that we showed on the second slide. And yet you want to become millionaires and billionaires. But fundamentally, people like Steve Jobs and the people actually created crypto and blockchain didn't do it because they wanted to become billionaires. They did it because they fundamentally believed something was broken in the world and they wanted to actually fix it and be part of the solution. And I'm guessing that's what, if you do that and actually really work with the SDGs around this, that's going to give you fundamental leverage. 
So what's the takeaway from all this? How do we build the community? How do we actually make it grow from here? Have the courage to take the lead. Have the courage to put on events like this. Have the courage to basically stand up, be noted, actually create a movement. Connect everyone, connect the conversation. But it's got to be completely inclusive. Every part of the ecosystem's got to play a role. And a fundamental challenge we actually have for, uh, for Vietnam in particular is at one level you're actually doing an amazing job of building the belief about we actually want to do something and we can do something. At the same time, you've got to build the capability. We've actually got to create the, the skill set and the capability and the capacity within this nation to actually back up what we're actually talking about. So for me, again, it's just thank you very much for the invite of actually being here today. I think this is an amazing opportunity, and as I said, for actually aligning something as, as fundamental as blockchain to actually the SDGs, I think is an awesome initiative. So thank you very much, and good luck with actually continuing to build the ecosystem from this point forward.